I'm going to introduce some data acquisition hardware we have in the lab. To begin, let's review the hardware we've already used. We've used a digital multimeter to read voltages. We've used an oscilloscope to visualize waveforms. And we've used the function generator to create waveforms. I'd like to introduce a multifunction device that we have in the lab. It's the National Instruments USB 6341. It's capable of analog input, analog output, digital input and output, and it connects to a computer through USB. In essence, this device can replace the digital multimeter, oscilloscope, and function generator because it can read voltages using analog input, record them and send them to the computer to visualize them on the screen, and it can output waveforms using analog output. In addition, it's capable of digital input and output. Here's some of the features of this device. It's 16-bit analog to digital conversion, has 16 channels single-ended or eight channels differential. I'll describe the meaning of some of these features in a few moments. It's capable of up to 500,000 samples per second. If, for instance, you use one channel, you can set it to take 500,000 samples per second. If you use two channels, you might set each to sample at the same rate, therefore the maximum for those two channels would be 250,000 samples each for an aggregate of 500,000 samples per second. For this device, we can set the input range to plus or minus 0.2 volts, 1 volt, 5 volts, or 10 volts. In addition, it's capable of analog output, much like our function generator. It's 16-bit, capable of analog output on two channels at 900,000 samples per second for a single channel. The range is plus or minus 10 volts. Now I've used some terms like analog and digital. What do we mean by these? Analog signals take on a continuous or infinite range of voltages. For example, the sine wave that comes out of the function generator takes on a wide range of voltages from its minimum at the trough to its peak voltage. Digital signals, however, are limited to a finite number of discrete or quantized values. For example, the voltage readings we obtain from a digital multimeter are limited to the three or four significant figures displayed on the screen. Computers are well suited to represent and store this discrete or quantized digital data. Rounding is a significant part of the analog to digital conversion process. An n bit analog to digital converter can output two to the n distinct values. The data acquisition device that I just introduced is 16 bit, so two to the 16 different values. Let's take a look at an example with a one hertz sine wave using a three bit analog to digital converter. Well, two to the three is eight. So there are eight different values that can come out of this analog to digital conversion. We're going to look at a range of zero to one volt or zero sevenths of a volt to seven sevenths of a volt. If we convert this sine wave into digital using this three bit converter, we would get the following signal. Measurements occur at discrete points in time. The sample rate is the frequency at which measurements are taken. Let's take a look at this example. A one hertz sine wave, if sampled at 10 hertz, would produce these points in orange. That sample data doesn't say anything about what happens in between those points. It just measures the voltage at those distinct points in time. Let's explore sampling in the context of an analog output. Voltage outputs change at these discrete points in time. 
The sample rate is the frequency at which the output is up updated. For the example of a 1 Hz sine wave sampled at 10 Hz, we would get the signal in orange as an output. Because the output is only updated every one tenth of a second, it holds that value for that whole tenth of a second until it's updated again. Our USB 6341 devices that we have in the lab are capable of switching between single-ended and differential input. What is single-ended and differential input? In the context of single-ended input, voltage measurements are made relative to ground. As an example, with our oscilloscope, the black alligator clip is always connected to ground, and it remains connected to ground such that the probe tip measures voltage relative to that ground. A differential input, by contrast, measures the voltage difference between the two probe tips, and neither probe tip needs to be connected to ground. As an example, the digital multimeters that we have in the lab could be considered to have differential input. In other words, we can swap the two leads of the digital multimeter, and all it does is change the sign of the reading on the screen.